It's time for the final preseason matchup here from the Overwatch League. Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Chris Puckett, and here at the desk now, we've added Doe back into the mix. You just finished casting a great series. We saw Dallas Fuel walking away with the victory. Doe, real quickly, overall thoughts. How strong is Florida Mayhem, and what were the strengths of Dallas Fuel? Well, you know, I, I think uh, the strength for Florida Mayhem, uh, from what I said on the cast, kind of comes from uh, their ability to play around Manhattan on that Roadhog. That looked like the, the best foot they put forward in that one, but ultimately, uh, right now, looks like a team with legitimately a lot of issues. I mean, the synergy we were hoping to see just hasn't kind of come through yet this weekend. On the flip side with Dallas, I mean, that was a, that was a messy series, man. I mean, that was... A, that was kind of a wild one, but I think what we just saw was Dallas taking full advantage of the preseason and saying, you know, this is our time to really kind of get in there and experiment. And if we win, we win. If we lose, we lose. But we're just going to kind of try some things and see what happens. We're going to catch everyone up at home. If you're just joining us, here's how the day started. Of course, it was a very strong performance in our first matchup. And you could see that the Los Angeles Valiant is here to claim the hometown city as the favorites. They beat the Gladiators 3-1. Our second matchup, Florida Mayhem. They had their ups. They had their downs at the end could not handle the Dallas Fuel on Numbani. That leads us to our final match of the preseason. We got the Seoul Dynasty taking on the NYXL. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know the face of these players yet, let's take a moment and introduce you to them. The Seoul Dynasty, the NYXL, our team from New York. Please get on your feet and put your hands together for the Seoul Dynasty. Doha, the Seoul Dynasty, they started the week going up against the unpracticed Shanghai Dragons. They were able to win that one in a quick 4-0. They played up against the NA team from Houston, and now they're going up against a top Korean roster. The question I have for you, is this their toughest challenger yet? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think you should be able to say that on paper without a question nyxl should be the toughest opponent they played this weekend you know shanghai was a pushover they had some roster issues of course on the other side there uh meanwhile houston i think actually uh, put on a pretty good show against uh seoul yesterday but now today uh, nyxl i mean that's a team that's made up of former uh, lw blue players and there's a lot of great uh, players on that one and i think seoul could struggle Talking about Seoul, if this one ends up going to a Game 5 Hex, who are the six players you can start? This roster is just so stacked. It's stacked. You could throw darts at a board and find a good six-man roster. But of course, you got Jaehong and Toby would be my supports. Miro on main tank, those are the easy calls right there. But if it's a map five, would be Li Zhang Tower. So I want Zumba in there to play Zarya on some of those maps. I want Wakid because I think Abara is good on that map. And I also want Bunny because Bunny is a solo tracer. Good work done there. Seoul Dynasty sitting down first, but it's time to introduce their opponent. It's playing on the right side of our stage. Please give it up for the NYXL. And out first is Pine, who showed off his stuff against a very tough Boston Uprising team on the first day. New York Excel coming in with so much talent. And so let's just talk about this team. When we saw this squad, who are some of the stars for any new fan who's watching them today? I mean, Pine was definitely a standout player. It's also something all the other teams did say. His Widowmaker is super strong. We need to shut her down, or rather him down on her. Uh, now, I did talk to Sol coming into this, and when I did ask them if Pine might be a priority target, they said, no, everyone is good, everyone is our opponent. That was their answer. I like that answer. Hex, let's talk a little bit about the Tracer here. Sabi Olby, probably the most famous player on this lineup. Everyone's watching his streams. As he's learning more English, the hilarity ensues. But <laughs> when it comes time for the game, he is just dropping body after body. How does he compare against some of the other Tracers that are in the Overwatch League? Well, we talked about him against uh, Stryker the other day. Stryker kind of avoided the TVT matchup a little bit. He was just off on his own, doing his own damage and hunting. We've seen that Sabiobi can shut down top tier tracers. If you look at the World Cup, he completely shut down Sinatra in their matchup. So I think Sabiobi is that tracer versus tracer specialist. I would like to see him force duels and really put other tracers in check. And finally, Doe, we got to talk about the lack of a support. Their primary guy, Jonas, <laughs> a little bit too young to be into the action. So JJ is going to be sitting 
coming out. They have Libro, a DPS player, filling that role so far. How big of a disadvantage is this for New York Excel going up against Soul Dynasty? Well, I, I think it does kind of lock away one of their best players, too. Libro is this incredible, versatile DPS player. He's kind of a jack-of-all-trades in that he can play any DPS I really need him to play for any sort of role. But uh, putting him in the support position kind of does limit his effectiveness a little bit. But at the same time, I mean, if you're going to pick one of these guys to sub into support for a little while, I, I can't think of a better choice than Libero. And that was uh, Jonak, excuse me, the support who's too young. Don't That's worry, right. he'll be joining us come January. It's time to get this party started. Final questions for each of you. As we enter this matchup, it's the final match of the preseason. Hex, as an analyst, what are you looking for from both teams? Well, I'm looking for it to be very, very close. Now, I want to see how the DPS match up because I think that's where their bread is going to be buttered when it comes down to it and seeing what kind of rotations they want to put on on their DPS because both teams have a lot of options. Doe, what do you want to see from these two teams today? I just want to see good games, man. I mean, that last series, like I said, it was pretty messy. I want to see some really high-level Overwatch here. High-level Overwatch. Zoe, are we going to get it? What are you looking forward to? I am most certain that we will be getting it. Soul was very confident to say they're going to try some new things still even though they're not familiar with their opponent and even though they didn't really feel like they prepped enough but uh yeah it's gonna be a good series right there los angeles are you guys ready for the last match of the day <laughs> let's get this party started as we send it over to our casters we got uber with mr x you wanted a blockbuster match for the final showing here at the Overwatch League preseason, well, you've got it. Five members of the South Korean World Cup team are in attendance today on the stage. And the only reason we're not have all six of them is he's born a little bit too yeah. late. <laughs> Flower, of course, looking on for the sidelines map, but there is an insane amount of talent distilled into these two rosters. Two of the best teams I think we'll have once the regular season kicks off. We'll take a look at the Seoul roster first. You know, Toby and Jaehong, you know, really kind of the core of this team in terms of you know how good they are as supports. These guys can play you know pretty much all of them, right? We saw Jaehong you know play a lot of Zen yesterday. Obviously known for Zana, Toby can run the Lucio, can play the Mercy as well. And we've got our, our own very own two times in that team as well. Double World Cup champion Zunba and Jaehong. Of course, that's only one half of this very spectacular and sparkly coin. It's the NYXL, of course, highlighted by players such as Sabiobi. Libero's in the mix here, still playing support, which is just so strange for us fans of Meta Athena and his masterwork at the helm, especially in terms of their strategies back in the day in Apex. Look, they're going to be a completely different team during the regular season once he can play DPS. There's a lot of different heroes he can kind of throw into the mix that can open up some more space for Sabiobi. But right now, you know, playing the support until he can get Jonak in. You know, he's underage right now, but he'll be good for the regular season. And of course, Pine, a champion of Intel Extreme Masters, Gyeonggi, one of the most interesting tournaments we actually got to see. A bit of a mix between Western and Eastern teams playing in Korea. And he was so st stunning at that event. That was back when Flower went by the name of Nanohana, by the way, if you remember that. And Pine and Flower were two of the first players to play in an online NA tournament as well. We actually saw them both luxury watch teams played in a monthly melee way back. That was our yeah. first showing. They've come leaps and bounds since then. <laughs> Let's have a look at the map pool. You can already hear the didgeridoo in the background. It should give you an indication as to where we're headed first. It'll be Junker Town to kick things off and wondering if NYXL had actually watched Souls match the other day that we did because this is the map they ran Jaehong on the Bastion and they ran the double snipers, the Widowmaker and the Hanzo. And what that allows you to do is, right, your Mercy, they're healing the Bastion and the tanks on the payload. If the other team kind of jumps onto it, you have that safety as Mercy to kind of fly away to one of those snipers and stay alive. Let's give these guys a big Blizzard Arena. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, NYXL, Soul Dynasty. Time to break out the fancy cookware. This one's gonna get hot. Pine the other day put on a show with his Widowmaker. So we'll see if that hero comes out yet again. Junkertown, a very good map for Widowmaker with the open sight lines. It's, uh, they're just teams getting their comms settled down here, Mitch, but I think we've kind of talked about it a lot when we get to Junkertown. The Bastion on offense, how do you get it off of the payload? Is it, it seems still like we, the most effective way of playing the attack, uh, do you think? I would say so. I mean, it, the, okay, so here's the downside of it, right? When it's working and the other team can't get you off, you can just kind of steamroll your way through the map. Okay. When they stop you, 
you have to make so many changes with your comp that you reset the ults on a lot of your players and then you give the other team a huge advantage in terms of ult economy. Again, sometimes you're dead if you do it dead. If you don't, if you stick to that Bastion composition when you don't have control of the payload anymore, it can seem like a complete waste of time. But if you switch away from it, all that juicy, juicy ultimate economy goes straight down the toilet. Yeah, because most of the times you have to switch out you know, both tanks, you're switching out the Bastion, you may end up having to switch the Bastion on the support, so you lose a support alt, right? And then maybe you have a DPS have to switch if you're running the double snipers, potentially both. So you're subbing out maybe five of your six players. And look, okay, so I love this from NYXL. This is what we usually see teams do when they expect the Bastion to play really close to this corner. You can see Mono actually land a hold as Orissa, and then the Roadhog hook could follow it up. They're not playing too close. They're not playing nearly as close to the doorway as I think it was we saw from the Gladiators on this particular play. Jayhawk's bringing out May here. So this is uh, kind of the same comp that we saw Soul run the other day. Instead of Bastion, they're going to bring Mei into the equation. And when you have Mei, right, you can use those walls, stall those players off, you know, get them split. And that's exactly what they did. They thought that NY would play close because they would expect that Bastion to come into play. What they do, they split the tanks off right at the beginning of the game with that Mei wall, making some nice plays, some nice progress with the payload. Jayhawk getting a lot of those right clicks with that anathemic blast. Delivero is cut down. But no choice but to chill out. Jaehong just put him on ice. And now, there are only a few ways to get out from this, this Junkertown doorway as a defensive team. So Jaehong can actually shut off one of those avenues of approach. But he's not looking at the right one. They're actually off to his left. It's my captured by surprise. The Hulk thrown in. Meko stopped in his tracks and forced to try and take a breather. That's an opening that we see Sol take advantage of. He's cut down. Mano as well felled by a headshot himself. And there's the wall. He's going to block the line of sight there for the Widowmaker of Pine. And that's going to be the first checkpoint for Sol. It feels like they're one step ahead, Matt. And for Soul, you have a lot of heroes who can kind of exist on their own and not really get that pocketing from Toby. Right, May, she can obviously self heal. Same with Roadhog. Kuki on the Orisa, when you fortify, you can just take so much extra damage, keep yourself alive for so long. You have great shield up time as well. It's a very interesting strategy they're throwing at you right away. It's the same one we saw yesterday, just subbing out the Bastion for May. Jay Hong, once again, frustrating his foes. It's not preventing them from, you know, being able to get out and set up in the time that they would like. A little bit of delay factor there, of course, with the wall. But most importantly in this matchup, it's an obscuration of line of sight. That's probably not even a word, you know, I just made that one up. But hey, who knows? Word, yeah. Who knows, yeah. Kuki gets getting it rezzed up there by Toby. So, Sol, slight over extension there. As Mano's able to get a bit of extra damage in. There it is. He found what he was looking for. He was hunting for a flanker off towards the side, and the scatter arrow does secure the kill. Mano falls there to the dragon strike. We keep getting pressured. Surely he doesn't survive this, but the damage may already have been done. Supercharger down as well for Soul. They're just starting to pick up the kills, moving right through NYXL. The Valkyrie, the Dragon Strike use there, the whole hog, and Supercharger. So you did use a decent amount of ults, but Jayhawk still holding on to that Blizzard. For NYXL, you're going to get your Valkyrie here, but that's about it. How are you playing around this this main at this point, Matt? If you're in YXL, what's the response? Maybe to try and shut this factor down. Well, it, it's almost no kind of like the Bastion in a way, where you, know, you get onto that payload, you just jump on it. May can obviously split off some of your other team members, and then just how frustrating it is with the freeze can keep you in place. You have Roadhog there to chunk you down with a lot of HP. Now you see Wikidi switches off of the Hanzo. Going to go with Tracer here towards the end of the map, but it's a very interesting strat. Don't really know how. We haven't seen this at all, right? <laughs> they fled a pick Ark right out of the sky. Well, uh, Ark trying to do his best Twinkle Toes impression, but it's a gut shot from Fletter that ultimately fells him. Finds himself face to face with Pine. That was a nice little response there, Pine. Very, very fancy. Wrist work, I'm gonna say, on that one, just to get his cross there where it needed to be. Pine is gonna run into Jay Hong as well. It's the end of the line for you, my friend. Jay Hong with a gloved punch. You know, it's funny, I really don't think, looks like she's wearing other mids. I, I, I fail to see how a punch from May is really gonna do that much damage. You, you always forget with May, too, with like her ice spikes, you know, that secondary fire, like how much damage it actually does. Pretty much one, not even a headshot to the Widow, took her down to basically no HP. There's a May wall to separate the players from NYXL coming out. From Jayhong, the whole hog from Zumba pushing him on back. But it's Savio B with a pulse bomb, Mecha with a self destruct, able to take out two. That's the ground and pound, the goon squad. They're going to jump on top of Zumba there. And even though we managed to take a breather and get some health back, it's not enough. To cut down pretty comfortably. Now, Jayhong there forced to back away. What if he switches on this? Blizzard's been used. Pine catches Fled of their mid step. It's kind of like the uh, tra tra trapeze artist that misses the next uh, trapeze and then he goes flying. Seems like we are going to see some changes coming in from Soul, so a lot like when Bastion gets stopped on the payload, you have to make some changes. It's the same thing with this May comp they've come out with off the break. So Jaehyung will go over to Zenyatta. 
You have Zumba go off of Frog, he'll go over to Diva, and then you have Makuki moving off of Marissa going over to Winston. So you use your Widowmaker all from both sides here. So you're gonna get a lot of vision. See how these teams go to attack it. Ark did use his Valkyrie in that previous fight. Toby still has his available for Soul. You can see how vigilant the NYXL are to make sure that Soul can't get in behind them under that little that little underpass, I guess, where Savior B is standing. You can see they're guarding that. Over vigilantly. Pulse bomb there for Savior B as well. But Jay Hong, Jay Hong getting pressured heavily there. A little bit of healing for him, but he can't escape this one. All eyes were trained on the Zenyatta. And unfortunately, not even a transcendent nature can keep you alive. It's Jayhong getting pressed, though. They definitely value keeping that healing back in the fight. It's so interesting with having a lot of these players. Oh, oh that is so filthy. So Toby will get the res, but... <laughs> no. Okay. Matter, yeah. Now Pine's starting to feel it. He's starting to flex on these nerds right now. Going to back down. <laughs> getting tickled a little bit there. Chased down by Kuki, but again, always has support. At this stage, it's going to be Savior Obi this time dealing with Flatter. The DPS of the Soul Dynasty have been cut down before they can get in position. And what I was going to say before Pine just went absolutely crazy, just nailing headshot after headshot, is it's great to see, like, you know, Savior Obi going up against Jay Hong, right? You know, these guys played on the World Cup. You have Mono there as well for NYXL. Now, these guys have been so much time playing with each other over the last few months that they probably have a good idea of what each other likes, what throws the other person off. Pine with some fantastic reaction here as well. Even if he's not getting kills, he's doing a lot of damage and making it very, very easy for someone like Mano to follow up and get that extra damage with the Tesla gun. However, he may have made his match. Might be the end of the line, but Pine grapples away quickly. He's not going to be let go that easily, though. Getting pressed by Jay Hong, but he doesn't care. Facing down a barrage of balls, and he turns around and sends a bullet between the Omnic's head. Still will drop. Jay Hong getting rezzed here. So Soul Dynasty able to cover over that player lost, but Ark's going to do the same. Libero returns to the fray, and Savior Obi is also here. Pulse bomb. Jay Hong falling to the pulse pistols. He's looking for a bigger target. Maybe Kuki here. Getting healed though by the Valkyrie of Toby. Looks like he's going to hold on to this pulse bomb for a short bit. And a lot of damage into Kuki. There's going to be the pulse bomb. Get the stick on a Kuki. So it's going to be Savior Obi taking out the enemy. Winston, the main tank for Soul Dynasty. Is the Soul, they actually have built up a few ults here. They have the Transcendence and they have the Dragon Blade. Losing a few members here. It'll be Mono using the Primal Rage, just pushing more members back of the Soul Dynasty. He gets Jay Hong there, but it's a 1v1 trick for battle. It's going down. Wikid gets the better of Savior B there. Doesn't matter though, it's going to be Soul having to reset here. You see the slight miscalculation from Savior B of where Wikid was two seconds prior actually prevented him from having his crosshair in the correct position and may have lost in that duel. Very close, though. That's what you expect from two world-class tracer players. Look at what an advantage, though, Soul comes into this next fight. They have the Transcendence. You see what he's going to actually land a Pulse Bomb there. Pick up one. They have this Dragon Blade. It's just when do we see Pleta decide to use it? It'll be Pine switching over to the Farah, actually, able to take him out before he gets a chance. Just when it looked like Soul were about to make some big leaps forward. The sent back to the start. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. They've got to go. Drawing board. We keep trying to challenge down here. You can see somehow Libero survives this one. He's pretty much just him in the mercy of Ark, keeping themselves alive. But Wikid we, we is stopped in his tracks now. He's going to have to back away. Again, runs face to face with Mecco and doesn't fancy taking the challenge. You see, Wikid is putting a lot of pressure with Kuki on him. Mecco will go back on with Fleta. 14 seconds. Oh, some nice shots there. Able to take Pine out. He still has this Dragon Blade. He's not been able to use it. He's almost going to be forced to pop it here at the end. Dragon Blade now. Fleta was trying to find the Widowmaker, if I'm not mistaken. But no, it's going to be Pine to save over here with the DPS. Pine gets raised back up. Fleta was looking for him. He's back on his feet now. Kuki on the Libero. And Fleta doesn't know what he's looking for just yet. Pretty much the first target to present itself. The NYXL need to jump on it here. Solo running with a bit of momentum, but that's a good change. Pine gets resurrected, immediately turns that into a man advantage by dealing with Jay Hong. Toby also falls to his barrage. He's dealt with both of the supports now for Soul Dynasty. No resurrection, no second chances, no finish on this map. NYXL put the foot down, and the Dynasty will advance no further. Soul had a great opportunity, Mitch, to actually push that payload the distance on that map. They had Transcendence, they had Self Destruct, they had Pulse Bomb. And they had the Dragon Blade. I believe no ultimates online for NYXL at that moment. I believe they get one with the Self Destruct. They get one with the Pulse Bomb. But they just were not able to get that Dragon Blade out in a great spot before New York had their support ult. It's interesting to see Pine switch from the Widowmaker to a Pharah for yeah. defense in that last stage. I mean, generally speaking, it's a lot of verticality associated with the final stage of Junker Town. But still, one would think that that can be a little bit risky given how enclosed the point was. But this game pressure wasn't really there on the side of Soldat. 
and it gave Ark a place to fly to. You know, we were on with Flutter a few times, and he was trying to just chase Ark down. How much of a difference does that make for a mercy yeah. to be able to get up in the air like that? When you always have, you you know you have an escape route, right? I mean, when Mafara is up in the sky, you can just use Guardian Angel get right up to her. In all fairness, though, I would say that Pine on the Widowmaker probably would have had high ground vantage anyway, so Ark probably would have had options in order to get himself off the ground. But, I mean, you can jump onto the Widowmaker if she doesn't have grapple, then you're both kind of stuck there, so... I, I do think, well, and look, when they don't have any hit skin on the other side, right? The bar just, can just shoot down rockets, just make plays. Very tough to pressure, especially if she keeps you at arm's length. Settle your own scores. Well, that's just what these two South Korean rosters are going to do. Attackers incoming. Four map series. We're hoping for five maps. That'll be quite the treat here for our final game of this preseason. It's been a fantastic week. It's been so good to have everyone here join us. What a great way to give us all a taste for what is to come in 2018. I'll be busy soon enough. It'll be soul on defense. We see right now you have Tracer, 76, and Farah. What DPS? I mean, yeah. Talk, tell me about this. I mean, I mean Jayhawk, Jayhawk, right? I mean, he's going to hack that mega health pack. You can keep going back to play off of it. But you're going to have Roadhog as a solo tank. I mean, he's a ton of HP. Stop the it's pretty risky. Slater hovering above. Was hoping maybe for a Zenyatta or someone to peek out here. It looks like. MYXL are going to be bringing in that Orisa here. So again, a lot of flank potential on Seoul Dynasty as well. Good way to try and you know break their way in behind that convex shield and get some damage oh. done. Toby down first, but it's traded out. Saviobi is punished there for going so deep to find the mercy kill. He takes Toby out so quick though, and you're going to get Saviobi back off the spawn. You spawn so close to the payload here. So it'll be Kuki able to take out Pine, so you lose one. But this is a very aggressive defense coming in from Soul Dynasty as the Sabio B taking out Kuki. And I, I don't really know about this, Mitch. I think it's a very interesting strat, right? If you can actually keep playing off of that mega health pack, but when you lose the Mercy at the beginning of the game, it all seems to kind of fall apart. Hey, maybe you can make sure Wiki can use that mega health pack. Zumba has his own form of healing and Flatter has Toby. Kuki also has his take a breather. So this is quite a self-sufficient composition from Soul, like in an individual sense, but they're quite fragile. And I guess you could have, like, hacked that Mega Health Pack, right? And then you have the 76 on the Tracer play on that side of the map. So the Mercy doesn't really need to cross to get, you know, the healing for the other members. But it is NYXL continuing to push the payload on through. Mecho putting some shots down up top as Roadhog. It'll be kind of just getting onto the point. But Pine can just play at such a distance, just get some easy pickings there. And it feels like there's no staying power from Soul Dynasty there as well. You see, they came one by one. But someone like Mecco is going to be more than happy to hook one in and then, you know, hit a breadbasket shot on the next with a scrap gun. It seems no like there was far more survivability on the side of MYXL and they had the momentum. Seems like everything was working against Soul. But again, a very confident uh, hero selection, I feel. Oh, we want, I want to break that down a little bit later on the desk and see if the guys can That's very interesting. spend some time on it because obviously we don't see that very often. Right, I mean, you have the Mercy connected to the Farah playing on one side. You have the Sombra Health Pack to heal the 76 and the Tracer on the other. And then you kind of just leave your Roadhog to be self-sufficient and heal themselves. And then maybe you can kind of rotate around that back right side to the Mercy again for some more healing. But Bizumba taking out Mecho here as we're on with Sabio. But Pulse Bomb connects. Gets up a very weak, they're gonna get him demapped. Alright, Mecha getting rezzed back up here, and he's able to use that second chance, the second bite at the apple to deal with Zumba. But Sabio has been free this entire fight. He snuck in the back, he dealt with Toby first, maintained a constant harassing presence. He was like a hornet in that fight. And now harassing down Fletter, he drops and NYXL once again stabilized here in the second stage. And you don't see Fletter until the end, and then Wakid actually backs out because those two players are going exclusively after Pine, and Pine with the healing from Ark. When he goes into Valkyrie, he's just able to stay alive so long. It's the thing that we've seen when the opposing teams have Widowmakers. You just have to dedicate so much resources when they're getting you know, damaged and healed up by the Mercies. And also the Zenyatta Harmony Orb to take them out. Fine. Sheepishly backing away. But save Yobi. He's able to find Fletter. It's like this. They're just playing in tandem, these two. One goes forward and one sits back. Pine now really fancies that perch for himself, but there's, a, no. again, a, a simian guardian up on high. Now he's going to head up there and try and use this one to rain down a bit of extra damage. He's going to run face to face with a tracer here. This is some close quarter stuff. Looks like Wakid doesn't fancy taking oh. the battle. Pine doesn't let him get away. He catches him by the heel just as he tries to slip around the corner. And that's only the first kill of this fight. This could get worse. Wakid does get resurrected up, and Mecho deals with Kuki in the back line. That whole hog making it extremely hard for the tanks on Soul Dynasty to access their intended targets. Toby is in Valkyrie though, providing a lot of healing for Soul. Mecco's gonna get pushed back a little bit. 
NYXL use a lot of ults. Nothing on the board right now. The payload being contested, though. It's going to be Kuki going primal range, just trying to stay alive here. Toby does fall. Jaehong's going to get a transcendence. Oh, no, he actually falls at 98%. So NY has a great chance to keep pushing this payload on forward. You saw from Sabe LB's screen right there, the golden box of victory not far away. Which Eden and Flutter have both had a very quiet round. They've essentially been nullified by Sabe LB and Pine's dogged resolve and pushing ahead. But Flutter has a chance to redeem himself, perhaps the Dragon Blade. Good stall by Zunbura. with Keen. They both throw themselves apart from the card. Great hook, though. j Hong can't do much about that. Mecco, it's an easy pick up for him, but just a oh. stack for the big hog. Now it's going to be a Dragon Blade coming through. Mecco found Toby just to the end of that, and Flutter's trying to do it all at 23 HP. Unfortunately, it's not his lucky number. And NYXL coming out on top in a lot of these engagements. Hook to the Diva, bring her in. Now the whole hog. Defense Matrix being tested to its limits to try and prevent the damage coming through. But again, it just doesn't last long enough these days. Payload on the move, 0 0.05 meters. It's a Desperate transcendence on the payload. Jay Hong throwing himself at it. Everything he had, and everything he had was not enough. NYXL build momentum, maintain it, and then they bring it home in style. At the end, there, Mecco was sick. He was able to take out Jay Hong before he could use transcendence. And then Toby's going for the res, not in Valkyrie, and he just fires right through his Orisa shield. He's able to just land a headshot, take Toby out. You never got a use of the transcendence there at the end from Soul. We spent a long time in that game, of course, on board with some of the tanks and some of the, the minutia of this tank play is what sets, especially South Korean tanks, apart from the rest. A decisive opening to this series from the NYXL and Seoul now need to consolidate. Again, perhaps some substitutions, they're always a possibility. There's a plethora of DPS options available for Seoul Dynasty. But Matt, we'll find out about that after the break. What a blockbuster. 1-0 to NYXL. We'll see you soon.